and there you have a shooting board that will do 45s and 90s. Couple of refinements that have to be done. Firstly, this corner here. What generally happens when you shoot, this corner bit here will split. So what I do is take a chisel and just pair off that corner. Like that. Now that will prevent the plane going up and splitting out the end. And you'll get a lot more service out of your board. Now we've got to square everything up. This is still a little bit proud here. So set the plane up to shoot. That means getting the blade So the lateral's got it running nicely. I'll double check that. Grab a bit of timber. So we go on this way. And what I want out of this is a nice, clean shaving, full width of the board. That way I know that the blade is parallel. I've had a look down, I've slided down the sole and it looks pretty good. So we'll just make sure. And that's what I'm looking for. I know my wife said she didn't want any oh, toxic smells, but this New Guinea rosewood, oh, it's beautiful. Save a fortune on pay puree. Eh? There you go. So that's good. So what I'm going to do now is start truing this board up. And what will happen, you'll notice there's a little bit of metal there on the edge that the blade doesn't come all the way down to. Now on a rebate plane, the blade would go from edge to edge, say a, a record 010 or a 10 and a half or something like that. These bench planes don't do that, so you can't go right up to the edge. So when I start shooting using this board, this little bit here isn't going to cut. So you're going to have a little step and that's what I'm going to put in now. Now I'll put a bench dog in there. This is where a quirky bench like this, bench dogs and holds for, it holds for bench hold downs or hold alls. And bench dogs is absolutely essential because you can do so much. And don't forget up this end, I've also got a tail vise that comes in very handy. So what I'm gonna do now is just basically break the board in. Before I do it, you'll notice on that side, it's just flat. What I want to do is actually create, and I'm not sure it'll show up, but create a little step down in here. Now you'll notice after that initial cut, it won't cut anymore. And that is due to this little piece here now running on a fence we've created there. I can just feel it with my I can just feel it with my fingers, but yet can't see it. It's a bit hard to see with these laminations. So this one's true. Now for the 45, again, I've got to clean that up so it is now flush with the cutting surface here. With this, I'm gonna split this out. So when I get a bit closer, in fact, I'll do it now, I'm just going to knock this sharp piece off here. And actually put a bit of a bevel at the back and a bit of one in the front. Should do it. So there you have it. A shooting board for 90 degrees and 45 degrees. We'll give it a run, see how it goes. Now the beauty with the shooting board is you don't have to be dead accurate when you're cutting uh, the angles because the shooting board is there to true the angle up. I'll give you a demonstration. 
What we'll do is we'll cut this one to, whoa, <laughs> nearly 90 degrees. That one's nearly 90. So we'll do the 90 degree first. Getting a bit of a mess here, but anyway. Put that up there, the dog's up there. I don't want the 45 in. Get rid of that for the moment. And I think we'll have a hold down. So it doesn't wobble about too much. That's not going anywhere. There's the one that's nearly 90 degrees. Pop it up against there. Grab our plane. That's at 90 degrees. We'll try one at 45. What I'll do here, it's not only for the Stanley Bailey style or the metal body ones. Also works really well with H&T Gordon ones. What you've got to do is just knock the handle out of the way. So you can either turn it around that way and use it as a steering arm like that if you want or you can take it right out all together and just use it like that up to you put the block in at 45 and we've got a fair way to go there because it's definitely not 45 and you can see there it's actually got a kink in it where I didn't cut it straight. So what I will do is I'll actually take it down to that mark just so you can see how effective these are. Now I could increase the depth of cut with this, but really I don't want to. So just stick with me, it won't take long. And there you go, and we'll check that. Well, I hope you found that um, useful. We didn't make a huge mess. There was not much noise. Took a little bit longer for sure than if you had a machinery shop with machines. But it's all to set out to show it can be done. And these are tools, if you want to persevere in an in in-house workshop, these are the tools that you're going to be using and they're going to last a long time and they're great fun to make. And not only that, while you're doing them, you're sharpening up your hand um, tool skills, which is what apartment woodworking or close quarter woodworking, if you like, is all about. So that's it for the moment. I'll tie to the bench. I must admit I got into a bit of a pickle, um, but there's not much mess to clean up. I've just got tools to put away. Next video, what I'm gonna do is actually make something that you can hang on the wall and be proud to have in your house. So until then, remember, if you've got a desire, if you can allocate the space and you've got the time, you too will have room for woodwork. And enjoy your woodworking, work safely, tidy up after yourself, and I look forward to having you at the bench again very, very soon. Bye for now.